Good day everyone and welcome to Adventures with Parker. And welcome back to our hiking tour of London's Thames Valley Parkway and Terry Fox Parkway. If you haven't seen the first part yet, I would definitely recommend going back and checking it out at some point. But you should be good to just jump into this video and you can go back to the other part later. When we left off, we were just about to enter Springbank Park. Now this park has a lot of history. It used to be a resort destination and was home to an amusement park in the early 1900s. Today, it's a city park that's also home to Storybook Gardens, a children's amusement park themed to nursery rhymes and fairy tales. We're going to explore all of that today, so without any further ado, let the adventures begin. <laughs> And finally, at long last, we are making our way into Springbank Park. Now there's a lot of cool things to check out in this park, so don't go away quite yet, we still have lots more to come. Now it's kind of hard to see between the trees, but you can see the playgrounds of Storybook Gardens. Storybook Gardens is a children's amusement park here in London. It doesn't have a lot of rides, but the park is well known for its collection of statues depicting fairy tale characters and scenes. But there's a bunch of other cool things to do in here, of course, as well. Like I said, this is the playground of the park. And further down, we'll get a look at the splash pad. So you can see the lighthouse here and the splash pad is just behind that. And through the trees, you can make out a little chapel that's in the park. I think it's a chapel anyways. I will double check and confirm that. Here's that view of the splash pad. Obviously it's not open or operational at the moment because of COVID-19, but it's a pretty decent splash pad. Over here, we can get a good look at the park's Ferris wheel. Obviously, the gondolas are removed. This is something that parks usually do during the off season to protect them from the winter elements. I mentioned earlier that the park is well known for their storybook and fairy tale statues and scenes. Well, here we can see an example of that. This one being dedicated to the little old woman who lived in a shoe. Now, if you see that green thing back there, that is normally a flat ride. I am not sure what kind, but again, all the gondolas of the ride are removed for the off season, but they'll get placed on again as soon as the park reopens. And right here, we can see the back of Humpty Dumpty's head. And it looks like he's still sitting on his wall, not cracked quite yet. We're now coming around to the front of the park. The trail continues in this direction, but over here you can see what is normally the carousel. It's located just outside of the park entrance. And like most of the rides that we've seen, it is currently in a disassembled state. But once the park reopens, it'll go back to looking like a normal carousel. I mean, I know it's not much to look at right now, but as a theme park nerd, it is so cool to see the skeleton and inner workings of these rides. It's, yeah. If you're into theme parks, you'll probably understand. Over here, we can see the entrance of the theme park. I will get a better look at it in just a second. But I just wanted to point out this little sea lion. The park has these sea lion mascots. They are so adorable. Okay, story time. Back when Storybook Gardens opened in 1958, there was a sea lion named Slippery. But one fateful June day, Slippery the sea lion somehow managed to escape from his enclosure and slipped away into the Thames River. After 10 days of alleged sightings, he eventually turned up near Sandusky, Ohio, and was taken into the custody of the Toledo Zoo. However, when Storybook Gardens went to retrieve Slippery, the Toledo Zoo said, nope, and Storybook Gardens was all like, excuse me, give us our sea lion. And then there's this whole back and forth, which eventually turned into a legal custody battle over who gets the sea lion. Well, Storybook Gardens won the case, and the city celebrated Slippery's return with a parade and a citywide holiday. Seriously, it was a huge deal. But the thing is, the whole thing may just have been an elaborate publicity stunt. What do you think? Did Slippery really escape all those years ago? Let me know in the comments down below. Anyways, I remember seeing sea lions at the park when I was a kid, 
but they haven't been there since 2012. And here it is, folks, the entrance to Storybook Gardens. Like I said earlier, Storybook Gardens is a children's amusement park. There's no roller coasters here and nothing that would really interest an adult. So that's why I haven't done a feature on it. But it seems like a really cool, cute little place. I would love to go back in and check it out sometime. Even if I can't do anything, just to look around would be so fun. I think the last time I went into the park myself, I was probably around seven. So it's been a long time. Here's a better view of that Ferris wheel and flat ride that we saw before. And over here, you can see a giant whale mouth. I'm guessing themed to Pinocchio. So obviously Storybook Gardens is not a huge theme park by any means, but it just has these cute little things and nice touches of theming and charm that really make this a unique place. So we're on the other side of the parking lot now. The castle and entrance is way over there. We're over here and yet there's another ride. I mean, this is just a display. But if you look back here, you can see the tracks for the Spring Bank Express. It's a little miniature train that goes all the way around this little section of the park. And look how small the tracks are. They're so teeny tiny. Just to give you a sense of scale and how big this park is, this is the far edge of that miniature railway that we saw. The station is way over there behind those trees. Storybook Gardens is way behind that and more of Springbank Park continues even further in this direction. And we have officially reached the three hour mark. All right, so we're almost at the end of our journey, but there's still a little bit more trails to go. So let's continue exploring. Now, unfortunately, I can't show you the rest of the park because that happened to be the moment when my phone died. As you can see by the images I'm putting up on the screen, thanks to Google, Springbank Park contains a gazebo, a playground, a little wading pool, and of course, more trails. Honestly, Springbank Park has to be my favorite park in all of London. It's just so huge and beautiful, and there's so much history to explore. Anyways, that does it for our hiking tour of the Thames Valley Parkway, Terry Fox Parkway, and Springbank Park. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, and all that wonderful YouTube stuff. Hit that subscribe button and notification bell to be the first to know when I upload a new video. And follow me on social media. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at ABV underscore with underscore Parker. As always, stay safe. And remember, the adventure is on. See you guys.